One of the most common questions is how to improve your performance on the cars section of the MCAT. In this video, I'll be taking you through some of the advice that I found useful. In some ways, I find it hard to give advice for this section because it does depend so much on your natural reading speed and abilities. That being said, I have never been an extremely fast reader, and by the end of my dedicated study period, I had overcome that to the point of being able to score well in this section. My experience with reading sections of standardized tests in general has often been that the advice that I find most helpful is just how to approach the test, what mindset you should take, not necessarily a specific strategy. I'm going to assume that at this point you've done some practice passages and that you're not just figuring out what the section is, you're actually trying to improve your performance in the section. Now timing is a huge issue with cars and one of the most difficult parts of this section. When I first started doing practice passages, I nearly always ran out of time. And even on my actual MCAT, I almost ran out of time, but using the strategies that I will describe, I was able to get through it on time. My first recommendation, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is to start out by thoroughly reading the passage. I think a lot of people will try to rush through the passage just so they can get to the questions as fast as they can so they have enough time to go through all the questions and try and look back through the passage as they're going. The issue with this is that you're pretty much wasting those first few minutes you spent reading the passage because you didn't get anything out of it the first time you read it. You really need to pay attention as you're reading it the first time and your goal should be to never have to look through it and reread it an entire second time. We'll get to the actual questions later, but first I wanna go through some of the really helpful tips for reading the passage the first time. Now there are a few problems that people usually run into when reading through a passage for the first time. One big one is that you will find yourself getting distracted with thoughts of questions from previous passages as you're reading the current passage. Another is that you probably aren't super interested in every single topic that Cars covers and you probably will find yourself wishing that you were doing something more meaningful than spending your time reading about some philosopher's thoughts on interior design. A third one is that there are some sentences that they throw in there that absolutely make no sense or are really difficult to understand and you will find yourself being distracted by those instead of focusing on the rest of the passage. All of these will throw you off and prevent you from understanding the passage the first time you read it, making you go reread it, which is using time that you really don't have. Let's start with the issue of being distracted with questions from previous passages. This one has a pretty straightforward tip to follow and I almost never had issues with this after implementing this tip. The idea is that before you start reading any passage, you take five or 10 seconds to think about absolutely nothing. This helps you get that previous passage out of your head so you can focus on this next one. If you've never tried this, I think you will find that it's surprisingly effective. And you can use a similar strategy if you've come across a passage that's super boring or putting you to sleep. If you find your mind wandering, just do the same thing as what you did before you started the passage. Take a five second break to think about nothing, be really happy that you are not thinking about whatever the passage was talking about, and then go back to reading the passage. This will improve your focus tremendously, especially in those moments where you absolutely cannot concentrate on the absurd topic that AAMC has decided to give you. Now for one of the most common stumbling blocks when reading through a car's passage. You come across a sentence or two that absolutely doesn't make sense and you cannot comprehend it. Either they're using some absurd word that no reasonable everyday person would use and you're expected to know what it means, or they're using some sentence structure that is objectively terrible and you cannot, for the life of you, figure out what it means. Usually, you'll try and read through these sentences one or two times to try and understand them, try and get it the second time, but eventually, sometimes you reach a point where you just cannot understand it. My suggestion here is to just move on, forget that sentence. It's not that important. It can't be that important to the main point of the essay, which is really what most of the questions are about. And if it is important, you need to just keep in mind that there was something that you didn't understand in the passage and if you come across a question on that, you might want to relook at that sentence in a different way. The chances are the AAMC just threw that sentence in there to throw you off and see whether you're A, some exceptional student that randomly understands the sentence, or B, you have the willpower to move on and accept that you don't understand every sentence in the passage. And the chances are that those questions that you get later will have nothing to do with that one sentence. It's just there to throw you off. And obviously you should not do this for every sentence because then you will get nowhere. Okay, so now you have some strategies to help you focus while reading the passage. Without those distractions, you can now put all of your effort into understanding the passage the first time and really understanding what the main point of it is. But the key here is to not go through the passage too quickly. You really want to take the time and go through and understand all the small nuances that might affect the author's point of view. And this will all be worth it as you're answering the questions. 
So let's move on to actually answering the questions. Now you may be thinking that after spending so much time reading the passage, you won't have enough time for the questions. And I think that people have this mindset because they're approaching questions wrong. When you first read a question, you should be able to formulate an answer to it in your head without even reading the multiple choice answers. And the only way to do that is to have thoroughly understood the passage. A huge mistake that almost everyone makes, and I would tend to make myself, would be that I would go through each answer choice and try and find specific evidence in the passage as to whether it was right or wrong. This is a complete waste of time because the main point of a passage is almost never found within a single sentence, and when people use this method, that's usually what they're basing their answer on. There will be a few times when this is necessary, but it is a huge time commitment to try and go back and learn the answer to a question after already having read the passage, so it's best to try and avoid this if possible. Now there are a few more tips I'll give about going through the questions. The AAMC likes to throw off some distractor types of answers, and you need to be able to recognize them and realize that they're not correct. Some of the distractors make absolutely no sense and have no relation to the passage passage, but you'll still be confused because you will think you have missed something. Be aware that those exist and that they are there to throw you off. Others will be the complete opposite of what the author was trying to say, but you won't really realize it because it's less obvious than you would think. Others will be objectively correct, but not match the author's point of view. You need to do your best to be aware of these distractors and not pick them, especially if they reference specific details that weren't even in the passage. The third one I mentioned about the author's point of view is key. You are picking the answer. The author thinks is right, not necessarily the right answer. There's a big difference. Another tip is that the correct answer is oftentimes some broad generalization and not some specific detail, but that's not always the case. So these tips are great, but they can only get you so far. There will still be times where you can only narrow the question down to two or three answer choices and you have no way of deciding between them. My suggestion in this situation is to just click one of them, flag the question, and move on. You really don't have time to think about whether you should pick this answer choice or this answer choice to one specific question. The reality is that spending that amount of time then often takes away from even being able to start reading the last passage in the card section and you eventually just run out of time and because of that one question that you were trying to get right, you ended up failing six questions that you didn't even get to try. So the key here is that you flagged it, so if you do happen to finish on time, you can go back and look at it. And the great thing about this is that as you're looking back at it, you will often have a fresh perspective and it'll be a lot more obvious to you what the right answer is than when you were grueling it out, thinking about it in the moment. So those are the strategies that I recommend but how do you actually work on implementing them and improving your score? So to actually improve your score, I have a few tips. The first is to really focus on improving your strategy each time you're taking a new car's passage. I think the key here, like most people will suggest, is to practice a ton. But you can't just go through the motions. You really have to focus on figuring out what works for you and what doesn't as you're taking these practice tests. The other is to start learning which questions are commonly asked about a passage, such as the author's point of view on something. Once you're able to recognize these, then as you're reading the passage for the first time, you'll be able to predict which questions are gonna come up in the question section, and you'll be able to focus on those as you're reading this section. Then when the question actually comes up, you'll already know the answer to it, so you'll be able to save time on that, and you'll be able to be more confident that you got it right. So more time for other questions and more questions right means better score. And that's how you actually improve your car score. So I hope this video has been helpful and you have to keep in mind that these tips will not work for everyone. You really need to find out what works for you and what doesn't. This section is notorious for being the one that you can't study for, but that doesn't mean that you can't improve your score by setting the right mindset and doing a lot of practice.